Article number 15. Move that the town authorize the select board to dispose of real estate located at 239 River Drive, Assessor's Map 6B, lot number 29, known as North Adley Village Hall, and the grounds. Upon such terms and conditions as the board deems to be in the best interest of the town, including a requirement that any buyer enter into a historic preservation restriction on the exterior of the building. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Motion and seconded. Um, the select board recommends this five unanimously. Finance committee recommends this unanimously. And capital planning commission recommends unanimously. Someone from the building committee, Mr. Nahar, please speak to the article. The one that uh, probably we'll have most discussion on. Uh, as you are aware, the municipal building committee was asked to review all the buildings and the uses of these buildings. I, we had a lot of discussion on which building we should start off with, and we picked this one, and, we, and a lot of discussion on how and why we should save this building. Uh, we looked at the uses that we have right now. There are two main uses. One we just talked about, which is the fire department. And we all know that, the, and that later on when we get uh, one of the newer fire trucks up there, they're not going to fit. So we, we're, as, as we just did, we're looking at some property for that. The other use is the um, park and rec. That is not the best place for park and rec. We have a second floor large assembly room, and we have a couple larger rooms, one being used for offices on the first floor. The building is in dire need of a lot of work. Everything has failed in that building. Uh, the electric is on its last leg, and it has had serious problems this past year. Um, there's not one thing in that building that doesn't need some type of help and renovation. As we had in the past, we had several uh, reports, uh, valuations done in all the buildings, and one was uh, a price tag of over $3 million. What do we get for that $3 million is a renovated building. A building that doesn't really fit any of the needs that we foresee for the near future. Um, we have seven buildings that we need to look at. It's going to cost us some money if we, and we're estimating $19 million if we fixed every single building up. If we put the four, three to four million dollars in this building, we still have a building that really doesn't fit the needs for anything. So with a lot of discussion, our, our decision was let some private person take over this building. We want the um, people, the residents of North Hadley Village to be part of this decision on, if we do vote to sell this, what this building is going to be used for in the near future. It can be multiple uses. It could be retail space, it could be office space, it could be some, uh, apartments, and it really should be to people in North Adley Hall that are going to be living with this building to figure out what they really want to see in there. Um, we do not and don't want to see that building torn down. It's, very, it's a very nice, uh, architectural building. Let's repurpose it. Let somebody else take care of it. We'll still be able to drive by and see it. But unfortunately, we have some very, very hard choices ahead of us. We have too many buildings to deal with. And this is our first start. So we're hoping that you would understand what we're going through to try to figure out what to do with these buildings and help and support this one. Again, it will have historical preservation requirements on it for the exterior. We're going to 
ask the Historical Commission and the folks up there to help us figure out what the should be and how, how we should go forward with it. Thank you very much. Jim Maximoski, 12 No Water Drive. I'm not speaking as a planning board member. I want to make this clear. Presently, the land is owned limited business, so there's a lot of small business uses that would be very appropriate to move into this building, and I think it would be great. What I would not want to see is an apartment complex in this building. To that means, I'm going to offer the following amendment. Insert after the word building in the article, and any future use, use shall comply with the zoning bylaw without variance. I'll, so, I'll second it. Right at the very end, Mr. Maximowski, after building? After the word building, after yes. After the word building. And any future use shall comply with the bylaw without variance. With yes. a zoning bylaw without variance. Correct. Uh, just for point of interest and clarification on that, does that mean it cannot be used for residential property? No. It means it could be one residential property, but not for apartments. It could be used for business, it could be used for retail, it could be used for, um, of course, any kind of a farm use, but it would not be able to be converted into an apartment complex. John Michkowski. I agree with Jimmy with as far as the apartments, but I don't agree that it would take the rights away from any individual to go to the Z ZBA. That's due process, and why are you putting a noose around someone's neck? Mr. Moderator, we have a question. The question is, does this exclude the use of the, the building as a condo, or is it only as apartments? Same thing. Same thing. I'm sorry, I believe you were next, Mr. Alvin. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, David Alvin, 57 Huntington Road. I would discourage that amendment. I think it would limit the range of responses that you would get from potential redevelopers of the site. I'd like to keep all the options open and see what comes back. Would that amendment, as written, deny anyone the right to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals? No. I have a yes and I have a no. Mr. Moderator, it would deny them the ability to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance, but they could go for uh, whatever the bylaw may have special permits to alter a non-conforming use or structure, but it, it only specifically is limited to going to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance. The ZBA has other functions that go to the ZBA for those. For those not familiar with lingo like that, if I were someone that wanted to come in and build apartments, and I saw that building and said, heck yeah, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to renovate it and put apartments in there. Oh, I got this. Oh, hey, I can go to the ZBA. Is that option open to me? It is not. Now, what the option would be open would be to come to town meeting, have the zoning changed, be another way to skin that cat, come to town meeting and get town meeting to vote to change the zoning for that property to allow more than one family. With a two-thirds majority vote. Correct. Okay, thank you. Kurt, you're a spot zoning expert, aren't you? Yes, but I'm wondering about <laughs> I remember you being right here. Ed Edwin Matusko again. Normally, I don't necessarily always agree with the planning board, but on this one, I do. Once oh, wait a minute. That was not the planning board. Well, the planning board <laughs> amendment. Uh, or, correct, Jimmy's amendment. Um, but if we don't have some controls, and something is put in there, like apartments or condos, then how can we stop it in another part of town? Once it's allowed in one spot, it can be allowed 
someone can say, you let, it do, you let, them, you let them do it there, you got to allow me to do it here. I will ask of the uh, planning board, is it not allowed right now as a right? Apartments are not allowed by right in the town of Hackley. Um, the only, most departments we have in town are pre-existing, non-conforming. We do allow accessory apartments, um, also known, a lot of people call them mother-in-law or in-law apartments, where you can convert an existing home and add a, if you would, a second family to live there, provided the owner also occupies the property. That probably would be highly unlikely in this place that you'd find just two families living in this building. Um, but if you wanted to do that, that would not be prohibited because that's a special permit by the planning board. And it's not a variance. On buildings built prior to 1961? Buildings built prior to 1961, um, if they were apartments in 1961, they would be pre-existing non-conforming grandfathered uses, but that would not apply to this building. Thank you. David Wiskevitz, 126 Mill Street, speaking as a resident. Um, there's a lot of area communities that have mixed-use buildings. Um, residential is usually part of that structure, um, usually on the upper floors. I don't see any reason not to do that. It would be a nice combination between a, a shop space down below or a restaurant and residential above. And there are many examples in Hadley right now where we have large residential structures that have more than one unit in it. So this would not set a precedence that already doesn't exist. Sharon Parsons, Mill Valley Road. It's my impression that any time a business goes into a location, they have to have a specific number of parking spaces. I would be concerned that the amendment that's on the floor would be a problem because it would, main, it would, it would mean that it would have to be a business and there's certainly not enough parking spaces up there for a business. Bob A. Henderson, 14 Shattuck Road. I just had a question regarding the, uh, the lot. <clears throat> Does that include any of that green space that is between the North Hadley Hall and the Congregational Church? Do we know what that line is? It will include some of that. It, uh, right now, we are going through a review of the uh, land right now to find specifically where those property lines are. There is discussion on exactly where that is and who owns some of it. It could very well be that another property owner does own part of that. But uh, our impression right now is that the majority of that ball field goes with the, um, the town hall up there. Dave Moskin, Rocky Hill Road. So, Tim, two, three years ago, we walked around that building together with a couple of historic commission members and residents and uh, heard from a building expert, preservation expert, that the building was in pretty darn good shape and was a pretty amazing building and the town should save it. So I'm, I'm here to argue for not moving so swiftly with the sale of the building. I disagree with the statement that it doesn't serve anybody's purpose well. I mean, Park and Rec's been functioning there a long time. For a hundred years or more, that building has served the community in various ways. Uh, there's been some revenue, which there could be again. No question it needs work. I believe the budget for that building is $1,200 a year for maintenance. That's what I spend on my daughter's 97 Corolla every year. So it's been a neglected building, and I don't feel like rewarding neglect with disposal makes sense to a community. So I would ask that we defer this, table this, and ask the community, which has never been polled on how they feel about taking this municipal building out of municipal service, and bring it back um, after we've talked to the citizens that would be most affected by a change of use. And, um, and I really think we could revisit um, a judicial expenditure to get the building um, in better shape. Tim, you're absolutely right, it needs a lot of work. But most people that I talk to say it's a wonderful building and the look of the building, sure, let's preserve it. But we just heard 
during the fire discussion, that North Hadley's growing, and that community, where do they go if there was an emergency? Where do the families that can't drive around easily or um, have a lot of spare time bring their kids um, after school? Or, you know, could the schools or library use it again to have a reading room and a remedial um, education space? I think with a little more vision and a little more input, um, and a lot might find, of money. And a lot of money That's over time. That's the problem, David. It's a lot of money. Well, it's a lot of money compared to what? So it's over a 10 year, if we take 10 years or five years to work on it, I think it's uh, an affordable project. We only have a few buildings in town, and this is one of them, and it's the only one in, in North Hadley. So once it's gone, it's gone. So I would really argue towards speaking with the community up there and looking at the 50 to 100 year growth as Johnny brought up. Let's not think about what's in the bank right now. Let's think about who we're gonna be 50, 100 years from now and, and take a little closer look before we dispose of, uh, of this um, building. Uh, Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive. And again, I'm not speaking as a planning board member here either, but if we could get back to the amendment. Um, I'm going to support Jim's version of the amendment, that it be without variance, bearing in mind that it's always possible to loosen up on something. If we adopt it as the amendment proposes, and in fact, there are no responses to any sort of request for proposal or request for bid, it could come back to this meeting and can be amended at that point. Uh, but let's start off with uh, a firm line and then see how it develops. Further re discussion regarding the motion that's on the floor? I guess I got a couple questions. Uh, we're putting a lot of uh, restrictions uh, some of them I think are great to keep the building outside of the building. Has anybody on the committee looked at, with all these restrictions, that is it even going to be a, a building that somebody would buy to invest, you know, upwards of millions of dollars to get it up to some type of standard? Uh, you know, I think Tim, to bring that building up to a, a standard, when they got in there, they would have to rehab pretty much the whole building. Are we going to put so many restrictions on it? that we're gonna be back in five years with a building that is totally fall down and we're gonna to have to bulldoze it or, or, or spend $10 million, whatever the number is. I think I've heard three million thrown around just to get it to a point where it's safe. Um, my other point is we have a zoning board of appeals, we have planning board committees. Why are we putting, isn't it up to that committee to, to look at a, a variance and do their job instead of trying to limit the, the work that each board should be doing, if somebody wants to go in front of these boards and, and make it some type of mixed use, uh, some kind of businesses and, and some type of apartments upstairs or however it looks, they have to go to the boards that are speaking not to do their job right now. And I think let these, an owner that could possibly buy it, put the money into it, go to the board and let them approve it or disapprove it. And if it's a zoning board or if it's a planning board, that's why we have these boards, that's why we have all these, these rules in town. So I think we should uh, allow this to go forward and let the boards do what they're supposed to do. You make a valid point because... <laughs> if we don't go along with the, the uh, revision, and we just allow somebody, anything that happens, we'll have to go in front of the planning board and most likely have to go in front of the zoning board. And they're gonna be, most likely, if, if there's more than one um, residence in there, it'll have to go for a variance. That's the time when the townspeople, especially the village, up in North Hadley Hall will be there to say yay or nay to allow the process to go through the way everything else goes through. Instead of putting restriction on, uh, such as a uh, tight restriction on right now, I agree. Um, to the building committee, what, isn't it true that um, the town towns have to pay a prevailing wage to repair a building and that's why it costs uh, an astronomical amount of money, whereas if a private developer, they have a real lot less of what they would have to put into that building and what it would cost them. When we do it, we have to gut the building, 
start from scratch right over again and you have to meet all the codes um, and do everything that a town needs to do whereas the uh, person that buys it doesn't have to do all that. They have to meet code but they don't have to do the prevailing wage like a town does. That is correct. I mean prevailing wage would easily double uh, and possibly more than what a private developer would be putting into the building. A point of clarification. The question on the floor right now is whether or not to approve Mr. Maximowski's amendment, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any further discussion? I'd like to reread it, including the amendment, please. Move that the town authorize the select board to dispose of the real estate located at 239 River Drive, Assessor's Map 6B, lot number 29, known as North Hadley Hall, and grounds upon such terms and conditions as the board deems to be in the best interest of the town, including a requirement that the buyer or buyers enter into a historic preservation restriction on the exterior of the building and any future use shall comply with the zoning bylaw without a variance. All those in favor of the motion with the amendment to it, please signify by raising your cards. All those opposed? Motion fails. Back to the original, I'm sorry, back to the original uh, motion. I'd like to speak to the physical shape of uh, North Hadley Hall. Over the past 50 years, that building did not deteriorate in the last 10 years. And every, every budget we go through the process, what seems to go first? The janitor and the maintenance of the building. I wish there was a law that any municipal building, when bought, when built, that they shall ma maintain the building, not only in a clean atmosphere, but a safe atmosphere, and we wouldn't have all these problems. But what my concern is, long term, like which happened to North Hadley Hall, look at all our other municipal buildings. Don't forget them. Those are the ones that the uh, municipality uses, have to use, and have plans for those buildings. And they're slowly deteriorating the same speed as North Hadley. Look what, look, look what we voted tonight on roofs, this, that. That's all lack of maintenance. We shouldn't be in that spot. Let's concentrate on our, on our regular buildings, maintain our buildings, and let something that's beyond, really beyond repair, let it go. Uh, Andy Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. First, I wanna thank the building committee for uh, starting on this incredibly difficult task. You've got a, a good plan, a thoughtful plan, and I appreciate all the work that you've done. Generally, I agree with you, but not about North Hadley Hall. I just have a very visceral, emotional reaction about letting go of town assets. Once you sell them, you never get them back. No building that we're gonna build to replace this hall is gonna last 100 years like this building has. You know, your, your grandparents and great-grandparents built this building with such care and quality that it would be handed down to generations to come. I, I feel very uncomfortable about getting rid of a legacy like that. Um, and I think some, some creative uh, thinking could come up with a way to keep this building in town use, possibly for less money. Um, but I don't think that was really given enough thought. Um, I guess my, to, to sum up, I would ask this vote, is this a majority vote or is this a two-thirds vote? It is a two-thirds vote. Two-thirds vote. Um, I would hope that if it goes down, we would mobilize as a community to decide to save this building and put it to the good use that um, 
previous generations intended. Bill to wire 388 River Drive. You know, I drive by that building at least twice a day, although I can't think I've had a reason to go in in the last 10 years. It's not being used for much. My father went to elementary school there. It's not being used for school purposes. That was one of the reasons it was built. It's basically outlived its usefulness. Um, and it is an anchor, a financial anchor around our neck. Uh, and I know, I've watched the selectmen meetings, and I know that one member of the selectmen uh, votes against uh, any expense, not one more penny for North Hadley Hall. And um, I, I've got to agree, it's, um, it's outlived its usefulness, and it's just a, an anchor. You should have shut me up before when I was speaking um, out of turn when the motion, the amendment to the motion was on the floor. I'm sorry. So I disagree with Mr. Dwyer, Attorney Dwyer, just because he doesn't go in there. There's a thousand people, I believe, being served by Park and Rec annually. Is that what Kathy told me last week? Um, have the schools been asked if they are at all interested in an after school kind of remedial, maybe volunteer run program up there for the kids up in North Hadley that can't get back and forth to? Um, to the elementary interest school at Hopkins. But again, um, not to go on too long, I really think the community up there should be asked carefully how they feel about it moving to commercial, to commercial use or um, a private owner, the millions of dollars that, you know, uh, uh, for an individual's home up there or something like that. So again, I respect everything that's being said. The building is definitely underutilized now. It definitely needs work and money. But it's a fantastic building, and it's the only municipal building in North Hadley in that growing community. Um, the fire study that was done said that the um, fire station attached is in fair condition. There was no recommendation in that extensive study um, to disband that um, station, although I'm totally in agreement with the department that uh, it either needs serious upgrades or we need to do something new. But I, I'd like to see the, the building stay with the town. I'd like to see um, it back into a more robust use. 1200 bucks um, a year just hasn't been enough to maintain it, so we are where we are. So I'd, I'd really like to see the community be surveyed first. One of the things I'd like to point out is um, people have come to me and said, well, can we do something to the building? Unfortunately, what happens with code these days is there's trigger points. If you put in 50% uh, of the assessed value of that building, and that the assessed value is extremely low right now, you trigger full code compliance. What does that mean? It, it means everything. It is not accessible. It is not set up well. You do not want uh, this, a second floor assembly. Uh, you put assemblies on the first floor. Why? Because you have large crowds and you got to get them out quickly. Uh, yes, the Park and Rec's used it. But it has, has it really been used in such a way that it fits the needs of Park and Rec? It really doesn't. It hampers their, their use. Their, their, um, all, everything that they want to do is hampered by that building. Unfortunately, what we have done in this town for too long is we've tried to fit departments into spaces. And what we've done is restricted a lot of great use because we've stuffed them into these buildings. And it hasn't worked well. And it's getting to the point that we, as a town, have to start looking at these buildings realistically for the use of town departments and get things back on track, get them into buildings that work. And that's what we're, we're, this is our first step with it. I just want to say I was on the same tour as Mr. Moskin and I didn't hear what he heard. Um, I heard that the building was in not great shape. That would take a lot of money to repair. The fire department is not adequate in there. The floor was subflooring and where the equipment was for uh, rescue and whatever was, was slanted and falling down. The oil tank is in the garage, which shouldn't be in the garage. It's a fire hazard, as far as I'm concerned. Um, there was a lot of other things that shouldn't have been there that were there. And um, we're putting money, bad money, into a building that we shouldn't. Years ago, 
Uh, the set center of town was thriving. There was a dip store. There was a business there that seemed to thrive very well. Everybody loved it. Um, there was also a Lesko Garage. So there's been businesses in the center of, of North Hadley for many years. The business went into North Hadley Hall and it's still been residential too. I think it would certainly be good for everybody. So, um, you know, please vote this down and let's sell that place. Um, I was on a different tour than the one Joyce is talking about. I was on the one where the, where the building inspector that the, was hired that came up with a three to four million dollar wild number. So I'm talking about a different visit with a different inspector. Thank, thank you, Joyce. Skipper Marianne. Michael Spain, Able 52 Bay Road. Um, I just wanted to let all of you know, just so you're all very clear, you voted to uh, expend some money for us to get a new rescue pumper to replace a 1987 Pierce, which is now up in North Adley Station. That truck was designed so they could actually back into the station. The truck that's slated to back into its position right now uh, does not fit. So there's modifications that need to be made as far as the oil tank that's, that was discussed, an emergency generator that's in that space, that costs money. That has been in capital planning for about four years now in anticipation of the purchase of a new vehicle. So I just think that it's important, you know, that we, we need to go one direction or the other. As a fire chief, I'm saying that we need a North Hadley fire station, whether it's in the North Hadley Hall, if it's in a tobacco barn that's converted into a fire station, whatever we got to do, we need a North Hadley fire station. As a taxpayer and as a resident, I think that building has, has outlived um, its use to a town, but I grew up in a small community, Sterling in Central Mass. The, the, the school that I went to, the elementary school, is now the, uh, the town offices. So why don't we move this on to someone else and maybe they can make it even more beautiful than it is now with just as good of a use that, that's gonna make all of us very proud and be able to drive by it every day and still look at the same, same beautiful building. I would love to keep North Hadley Hall, but the reality of the fact is we have to spend so much money to keep up our existing buildings and get them repaired that if we don't vote to sell this building now in five to ten years from now, we'll be voting to demolish this building because we do not have the money to repair it. You know, one more thing on the maintenance uh, that, you know, this winter uh, the furnaces failed. Uh, our station was without heat. Uh, pipes are broken, the roofs are caving in on, on our fire department, so anybody thinks that our side is something that's nice, you know, it, it collapsed this winter with, uh, when, when pipes broke and froze, uh, you know, it, it, it truly isn't in, in very good maintenance. I think at some point uh, anybody who thinks they can repurpose that building easily and, and have uh, school kids in there um, probably don't really know the new codes. It, it meets no handicap accessible in any shape, form. Uh, so I think the best, the best thing we can do is move it on to a, a private owner and and, uh, and get out from underneath it. I'm Lila West. I live at 164 South Maple Street, and I wanted to point out that I thought that an earlier point made about having a community center and having a place to come together was a great one. But I also think that we need to look more globally at everything we've discussed tonight, the need for another fire station that actually suits their needs, a need for a building that is disability accessible and ADA compliant. And so I just wanted to throw out there that maybe our money would be better spent and our time better used if we sold the building and then used that money to build a building that would suit multiple needs all in one and actually create a building that fits what we need it to do. This is a momentous evening because I'm, now I'm even trying to agree with, I think I agree with Johnny Mitch too. <laughs> but the thing, the thing that bothers me the most about this amendment, and one of the reasons why this is such turmoil, turmoil in my head, is that this building has been in the town of Hadley for 150 years. And it seems as though within the last 10 years it's gone to pop. Now, if, if that's what's happening, then we're allocating the funds in the wrong place. And it doesn't matter if we replace roofs or build new buildings. 
like this gentleman says, we have to maintain them. And whatever we do, if we don't do that, every town meeting we're going to come up and say, well, this building's falling down again, so we got to replace it. But I hope that the powers that be have taken this to heart and we'll start putting the proper maintenance into our, into our town structures. Any further discussion? Any new items to bring to light regarding Article 15? That's not how that works, guys. Okay, uh, before we vote on this, I'd like to thank the Mothers Club, Richard Truswell, the Building Committee specifically tonight. You guys did a great job with the momentous task that was in front of you. Joel Bard for joining us, and everybody here for joining us here tonight. This is a big article to, that we're here for, and it takes a lot of input from everybody. And everybody here from the Select Board to the Finance Committee to the Building Committee appreciates what, what you were able to en enlighten from them. The amendment failed, so we are voting on the original motion. It is a two-thirds majority. All those in favor of the original motion, please signify by raising your green cards. All those opposed? The motion passes. One eighteen twelve. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this evening. The business of the town has now been completed. I move we adjourn. Move to be adjourned. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much again.